Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have the IBM PS2 model uh, 25, also known as the 8525, and uh, it's got a problem with the floppy drive right now, and so we're going to take the thing apart. It's been about 20 plus years since I've taken one of these things apart, so we'll see how it goes. So I've got the thing flipped up on its back and uh, flat head screws. How about that? Um, so we're going to take this one out. And then we're going to take the other one out. And if I remember correctly, this thing should kind of tilt forward. Because uh, I don't want you getting into the monitor unless you absolutely have to. And this monitor works fine. I've turned it on and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think you can pull this thing, maybe lift it and pull it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, crusty sound. Okay, um, let's go ahead and remove these two cables they're pretty unique so i don't really have a hard time figuring out where they go and we've got that and oh, that one feels a little stuck give me a sec i'm gonna get a spudger on that Okay, and we've got a zip tie in the way, so we're going to cut that. And here we go. Now, I don't remember exactly how to get this thing to fully drop out. Aha, now I remember you can actually see these things from the inside. Uh, so you squeeze these two little black uh, rod things here. This one's kind of stuck. And you'll see that that removes it from the pivot point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this network card here and that will let us take a look at the rest of the board. So if I'm guessing correctly, that's a 10 base two uh, network card, which usually those came with some form of ethernet jack also. It was made to work on the same coax cable, like the RG59, RG6 stuff that you would use on your TV. And uh, you know, so the idea with them is that they would kind of run from computer to computer. Now looking at that, we've got a split cap right there, um, which doesn't bode very well for this card. Otherwise the card looks kind of pretty. Um, but we're gonna set that to the side. Now, one of the things that was interesting is that this is a 16-bit card, and this thing only has 8-bit slots, which is uh, interesting. Maybe it works in 8-bit mode. I don't know, I'll have to do some research on this card. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got for processor. They had a couple different versions of these things. Uh, this is the 8086 2P processor, which I believe is the same one that was in the Tandy 1000. Um, so, you know, the 8088 was a cheaper version of this processor that had only 8 bits, uh, at least externally. And this has 16 bits, although uh, we're still interfacing with the bus at 8 bits. Uh, let's see, anything else interesting here? We have a uh, math coprocessor slot. I'm guessing that would still take the same 8087. In fact, even the uh, 286 processor can use an 8087 coprocessor. Uh, over here we have something that looks like IDE, it's probably not. And the reason why I don't think so is because, um, you'll see when I get the floppy drive out, I'll show you what makes these things unique. Now again, it's been a long time since I've taken one of these things apart, so hopefully there's enough slack on this cable to get this drive out. Uh, let's see here. Whoops. I thought it was supported on both sides. Uh, I guess not. But what is interesting about this thing, let me try not to drop it all over the place. What is interesting about this thing, you'll notice is that that is not a standard floppy cable connector. And the reason for that is because this thing uses one cable for both power and data, which if you've ever put, hooked up a floppy drive or even a hard drive, um, pretty much everything, including the SATA drives, have a separate connector for power versus the data. So I'm going to get this out. I'm going to, I'm guessing that's what this pull thing is for here. Let's see. 
Okay, that hadn't been off in a while. And we're gonna fish this out, probably unwisely. I'm gonna get it that far and I'll figure out the rest later. Okay, so what we have here is a, I don't know, it looks like a 34 pin, uh, yeah, 34 pin connector, but it is also supplying the power to the drive. So not just the, uh, you know, not just the data. So the first thing I'm seeing is that this drive is filthy. Um, so I'm gonna try to just simply clean it out. But what I've heard is that a lot of these drives and a lot of these things in general on these old ones suffer from uh, capacitor failure. So we're gonna get a good look at everything and see if there's any kind of failure that we need to take a look at. Now I did pop these two screws off and I haven't taken this off yet, but you can kind of see what's going on over here. We've got this one and this one, and uh, that will let me get a better angle at cleaning these heads. You can see double-sided drive, you have a head up top and a head on the bottom. So I'm gonna get in there with a, uh, with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and just get that cleaned up and you know give it a little bit of time to dry. I've blown it out with some compressed air so it's a lot cleaner than it was and I've just got a lot better visibility. I can get down here, looking at that, um, that grease looks a little gunked up. I'm gonna probably put a little bit of lithium grease on that uh, drive spindle thing down there to allow it to move a little bit more freely. Maybe it wasn't able to quite index exactly where it wanted to, to index. Okay, so I've cleaned a fair amount of these and I don't see anything uh, coming off on this thing. So I'm just gonna make sure I didn't leave any fibers or anything in there. And then I'm gonna test this thing after I put a little bit of grease on this spindle and we'll see what happens. So I was just gonna button this whole thing up and in faith just put it back together hoping it would work. But I do have one more issue I have to deal with. This is a uh, 1.4 meg disc that I've reformatted to 720K, um, hoping that this drive can read it. Now that is one of the things I've said over and over and over again about working with these vintage computers is I only have one 720K drive total. I probably have some 720 discs laying around, but I don't know how good they are. Um, the drive that I wrote this with was a 1.4 meg floppy, so there's just a million different reasons why this floppy may not work, even if everything else on the system is working. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and hope for the best. I do wanna be able to see what's going on on the top of the drive, so I've left the cover off the drive. You can see it is going down there and putting a little bit of pressure on it, so here we go. So we do have something on the screen. We're counting up RAM. We've got 256, 384, 448, 512. Yeah, it's trying to, okay, keyboard error. That's, ah, oh, I gotta put in a keyboard. I'll be right back. So I don't know if you heard that, but just before we got that keyboard error, this thing kind of snapped a little bit, but didn't spin, which is not a good sign at all. That makes me think that we could have some form of power issue, which could mean a bad capacitor on the floppy drive. We're gonna go ahead and try it again, and we're gonna see if the disc is actually spinning. But I am not very hopeful that it's gonna do that. No, we are not spinning. Oh, we are spinning. Huh, starting him as DOS. Come on, baby, come on, come on. I just need two inner prompts. It boots. The thing boots. I did not think it was gonna work. I'm sorry for my lack of faith, Mr. IBM PS2 Model 25. It boots. That is awesome. And I know this is not like the most elaborate repair ever, but it didn't work and now it does. And that means something to me. So let's see what we got here. All right, and I won't make you uh, look at too much flicker, but uh, here it is. It's back together. The floppy drive's in there. The floppy drive works. Uh, I found this online, it says cracked version. And uh, so we're gonna hit escape past that and give it just a moment. And there we have it. King's Quest one on the PS2. Uh, working great, looks a lot better on my screen than it does on yours, but anyway, 
that was a simple fix to get this thing up and running. So hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.